Hi everybody, um, I hope you're all really well. Um, I just wanted to say thank you so much for all of your birthday wishes. I had the most uh, wonderful yet somewhat bizarre birthday this year, having worked all weekend at the Vogue Festival which was amazing and I got to do my talk with Lisa Eldridge and Val Garland which was a real kind of pinch me moment, career highlight. Um, on Monday I did some filming for you and your wedding magazine and then went on to the Vogue 100 party which was just bonkers. Thank you so much uh, to Blair um, and Jenny at Jenny Packham for lending me my blue dress. I loved it. If you haven't seen, do go to my Instagram page and check out the pictures. Um, I'll put a link uh, in the description box. Before I forget, I'm really nervous I'm going to forget to mention it, so I just want to get it out now. Um, I am going to be at IMATS on June the 4th. Well, I'll be there Friday, Saturday and Sunday, but Saturday, June the 4th is my demo. So I will be live on the main stage at two o'clock on Saturday. Um, so if you don't have tickets already, come get tickets, come and watch and come and say hi, I'd love to meet you all. Okay, I'm digressing. What are we doing today? Look at, can you see my birthday flowers behind me? I've got my parents in law there, uh, roses from my boys, and then these gorgeous peonies, um, which are from the lovely Alexandra Shulman, editor of Vogue, to thank me for doing her makeup over the weekend. So it's a nice bright background today. Okay, what are we gonna do? Well, I said as a teaser in my last video that in light of it being my birthday, maybe I'd look at doing a party makeup for you today. Um, and I was having a look back through my Instagram and um, I did a boomerang video a couple of months ago with some kind of purpley lilac shadows, which were really popular. So I thought, why not let's do a video on how to recreate that look. So I've started with my skin. I've prepped with um, the extra illuminating balm, which I love to give my skin a bit of a glow, and a bit of hydrating gel cream. And I use this primer as um, I didn't want the, my base to be too slippery um, or wet. So actually, um, I get quite a good finish from my skin foundation stick. So I've started with a bit of um, under eye concealer and corrector. So as always, I've done my corrector in bisque, which is the pinky tone concealer, which cancels out my shadows. And then I've done a little bit of warm beige concealer. Um, and I've done some foundation stick as well. I'm just going to top it up though. So, skin foundation stick in warm beige. So I'm just dusting over the top with my full coverage brush and then stippling the product into the skin. And I much prefer the finish when I've stippled the makeup in because I just find it sets the makeup into my skin far more effectively than if I was just to kind of sweep over. Um, but then I shall do what uh, Bobby taught me and that is to then use my fingers just to help melt the makeup into the skin so whilst I achieve good coverage actually the texture is minimized because I've used the warmth of my hands and my fingers to melt the makeup into the skin. Because I'm going to be using purpley toned eyeshadows I don't want those purple colours to melt into any eye bags I may have under my eyes, it has been a long, long old week. This is Skin Weightless Powder Foundation, by the way, in beige, love it, um, especially for an evening out because it just helps cement that coverage I've achieved with the foundation stick. And again, I'm going back to my favoured stippling motion. My hair, or my hair, my face is quite downy, so I have quite a lot of fine hair on my face and if I um, sweep powders too much I find that the pigment gets a bit stuck in those fine hairs so actually it's better for me to stipple the powder in place. I can then sweep away any excess like so. I'm going to move on to some bronzer. Now you all know that I absolutely love 
the all over bronzing gel. Um, this stuff is amazing for creating a really natural, healthy glow. However, because I've built the coverage of my foundation stick, I don't want to interfere with that too much. So I'm going to use some good old classic bronzing powder and I'm using the medium with the bronzer brush and I'm going to start by sweeping it over the top of my cheekbone and blending back into my hairline. You'll be pleased to see that my hair is clean this week. <laughs> I was in such a tearing hurry last week. Um, but I'm loving it, so thank you lovely Jack. I've had lots of compliments on my shorter blonder hair. Um, so yes, using the flat headed bronzer brush to buff the colour through the top of my cheekbones into the hairline. As you saw I just did my neck and I had a spray tan with the lovely Demi at B Browns which is a, a lovely salon in Blackheath which I've been going to for a while but it's only I think probably the second spray tan I've ever had um, and yes it is wearing off somewhat patchily if that's a word um, I, I love exfoliating so I have been scrubbing and unfortunately my tan's coming off um, but yes I think my shoulders are just about okay I thought this was quite a nice kind of dinner or evening out top showing a bit of shoulder cleavage um, brilliant yeah so getting skin nice and warm um, everybody's different however I feel much more confident and healthy looking and awake when my skin has a healthy bit of colour so uh, that's even more important for me if I'm having an evening out brilliant so I now need to marry that with some colour on the apple of my cheeks and because I'm going kind of purpley on the eye, I want to keep the cheek in the same colour family. So I'm going to use my classic pale pink, number nine. Look at it. Gosh, it looks so bright. But I don't want to use a corally blush when I'm doing a purpley eye because coral and like pinky purple are totally in different colour spectrums and therefore they might clash. So I'm going to use a pinky blue blush, but just a little bit of it. And I'm going to sweep that over the apple of my cheeks with an angled face brush and back out to meet my bronzer just for a subtle soft pinky hue. Okay, is that enough? I may come back at the end and do a tad more of that. And again, just to make sure it's all melted in, I'm just gonna use my fingers to take off any edges. It's funny, for some reason my camera is further away from me than normal so I can't actually see quite so well. I should probably learn how to zoom in and out. <laughs> Something so basic, yet so alien to me. I am probably, of all the people I know, I'm one of the worst people with technology. So actually the fact that I even managed to make these videos and upload them is quite frankly a miracle. Okay, so I have um, my cheeks done. Let's go on to a bit of eyebrow um, and I'm going to use the classic brow palette. Let's shake out that there. And I'm going to use the dark brow kit to fill in my brows. So I'm starting with a little bit of the mahogany colour first. This I'm going to use just to create my shape. So filling out the higher point of the brow first and my tail and then using the saddle, which is the lighter colour, to buff through the brow just to create that little bit of extra body. So it's always key to brush the powder in the direction of the growth of the hair for the most natural finish. There we go, quick and easy. So I'm just gonna brush my brows through with the brow groomer brush just to soften any edges. I'll be doing quite dark liner so I don't mind that the brows are a little bit strong at this point. Okay, so should we start with a bit of eye? How exciting. So first things first, I just always like to sweep off any excess grease oil that there may be on my eyelids. I'm then gonna take a little bit of the long wear eye base 
and this is the longwear eye base in medium and I'm just going to apply some of that to my lid for my powder shadow to adhere to. So I just put a bit on the back of my hand and then going to sweep it over the lid and not only as you can see it neutralises the colour of my eyelid but that will act as a great base now for whatever shadow I apply next. And I think for this purpley look, let's start with a really good base of lilac, which is quite a fun, check out this beautiful palette I made. Oh, look at that. Black plum, eggplant, mulberry, lilac, and silver lilac sparkle. Woo! I love it. Okay, so first into the lilac shadow, and this is a shimmer wash shadow. So um, it's quite vibrant and I want to make sure that I've got plenty of that through the main lid of the eye. I'll probably use one of the darker purples as a bit of a um, eye contour colour but for now I just want to make sure that I really set and work that lilac shadow into the lid. So I'm using a bit more of a pressing motion with my eyeshadow brush. Let me just sweep that through the crease of the eye. But um, something I'm a fan of doing is then taking my ring finger and just working the shadow in and I find that little bit of pressure from my ring finger locks the colour in place a little better. Okay, so we're getting there with the bright lilac lid. I'm now going to take on my eyeshadow brush a little bit of this gorgeous mulberry purple and I'm going to start building that into the crease of my eye just to make it a little bit stronger in colour. So as you can see, I've popped the head of my shadow brush into the crease of my eye and I'm simply blending back and forth in that kind of windscreen wiper motion just to get that purple to adhere through the crease of the eye. And it's always best, you can start with a little bit of pigment, but just keep adding until you've got the depth of colour that you're hoping for. But always best to start with a little as you can always keep adding. So I'm just doing little bit by little bit to get the intensity of pigment that I'm looking for. And again using a mixture of windscreen wiper motion and then a gentle sweeping. And I love purple. Purple's really good if you've got like a greeny bluey eye like mine. Just helps bring out the colour. So I'm just using my finger to blend the higher point. Pretty. And I'm gonna, using the same brush, I'm just gonna go into some of the mulberry and sweep it along the lower lash line. Now I'm going to use some black eyeliner as well. So this can afford to be quite nice and thick and smudgy, hence why I'm using the eyeshadow brush because I will apply black towards the root of the lashes in just a moment. Ooh, look, so fun. Let me do the other eye. Okay. <laughs> So now I've got kind of the base of my purple on, I need to start building a little bit of definition at the lash line. So I'm going to take my classic black ink gel eyeliner and with an ultra fine eyeliner brush, I'm just going to sweep some of the gel along my lash line and then I'm going to use a smoky liner brush to buff it. So actually let me do it into my palette lid. So I'm simply going to use the side of the head of the brush and just sweep all along the lash line right into the inside corner and blend it all the way 
along the lash line. Now I know I want it to be quite smoky, so at this point I can afford to maybe not be as precise as I might be sometimes. So as you can see I'm just getting it on, making sure I've worked it right into the root of the lashes, all the way along the lash line. Then with, oh hello eyelash, haha, <laughs> then with the smoky liner brush I'm just going to go all the way along that line and just buff it and diffuse it. So what the I get in the end, the end result is a really pretty smoky line that blends into the purple shadows that we've used on the top lid. You see, we're getting smoky people. Right, I'm then going to take the Jet Longwear Eye Pencil and I'm gonna take this through my lower waterline just to ensure that I've got the darkest finish. At this point, I always worry that you can't see what I'm doing. How can I do it? Oh, can I do it like that? There we go. There's a thought, Han. So I'm just blending the pencil into my waterline all the way along, right into the tear duct. And I also want to ensure that I get right at the very root of my lower lashes. And then what I'll do is I'll then go under the lower lashes with the smoky liner brush just to soften that so that the black liner bleeds prettily into the purple shadow that I applied along the lower lash line earlier. Okay, so again using a smoky liner brush to simply buff the edge of that jet long wet eye pencil along the lower lash line. We don't want to see any skin at this point, any bit of skin kind of eking out there would lessen the effect of that smoky eye. Look at that, good gracious. Okay, let me work on the other side. Okay, so once your um, liner is blended both on the top and lower lid it's time for a bit of mascara and what better mascara than let me turn the eye opening mascara i don't normally but for the point of this exercise i will just curl my eyelashes quickly so that um i get a, a little bit of extra lift to my lash look so i'm just slipping the curlers over my lashes and then pinching at the very root to get a good lift. Oh, I love that. In fact, Caroline, I'm going to pump and do this mascara straight away. Caroline taught me that um, certainly with her lashes, she needs to do her eyelash curling and then mascara immediately to ensure that her lashes don't drop. Um, so that's what I'm going to do. When doing a smoky eye like this, it's really important that you get really good coverage and definition with your lashes. So I'm going to take a little bit of time to layer this mascara, but you can see already, she says making a little bit of a merry mess. With just a couple of strokes, I'm getting pretty good coverage. I'm definitely doing my mascara face, aren't I? <laughs> it's very hard not to. Okay, so I'm just gonna come up close so you can see, let me lean over my products. But can you see, look at that. That is just like three coats of eye-opening mascara and, come here light, look at those lashes. Oh, please focus. Can you see those lashes? Cray, to the cray cray. Let me do the other side. Okay, we're getting serious now, you can see because I'm coming closer to the camera. But you should be able to see now, oh let's just sweep under my eye. 
It's just seen now that we've created that kind of lilac-y, purpley hue on the eyelid with some pretty intense uh, liner along the root of the lashes and uh, some mega mascara, the joy of eye-opening mascara. I am a real fan of falsies, but as you can see, with this mascara, you simply just, you just don't need it because it does all of that volume work for you. Just want to finish off, of course, with some sparkle shadow. Now this is the Silver Lilac Sparkle, and I'm just going to apply it with my ring finger and just sweep it over the shadow that I've done so that you get that gorgeous lilac-y sparkle. Also, to me, that really finishes um, this kind of party look. However, if you want to leave it kind of more matte, then that's your option. This side, of course, has the sparkle. Um, and if ever given a choice, I think I would always, <laughs> always choose sparkle, indeed. Okay, great, so it's as simple as that. Let's finish off a little bit of lip, shall we? Because I've done such a strong party eye, we'll keep it quite nude on the lip, and I'm going to use the Brown Berry Art Stick. And I'll just sweep it along my lower lip, and then kiss it up to my top lip for a really good kind of neutral toned lipstick. I also like going for a slightly more matte finish on lips when you've done such a big eye. And then um, let's just do a tiny bit more blush. These are all little finishing touches that you can do once your makeup um, is finished. You just kind of need to get it done and then take a step back and see how it's all translating on camera, Brillo. And then, why not, let's add a little bit of this. I know I've done this in videos gone by, but this is the Pink Glow Highlight Powder, and it's simply divine. With the angled face brush again, I was gonna sweep over the product and dust it over the higher point of my cheekbone, and this will be so pretty as my head turns in the light, you just catch that soft iridescence. I'll just sweep a little bit under my brow bone also, and a little down the bridge of my nose. But it really is the most beautiful, alluring highlight. It's a great word, isn't it? Alluring. Thanks, Miranda, for bringing that back. <laughs> so again, just sweeping over the top of the apple of the cheek there we go, onto the cheekbone and down the nose. Should we do the cupid's bow as well? Why not? While we're at it. Okay. Does it need anything else? So there we have a fun party eye in purple. Um, I'm still learning my new hair. Um, so I don't quite know how best it behaves. Um, gotta say, I love it though. Thanks, lovely Jack. Um, yeah, love it. I've just, on talking of hair, I have just used today a little bit of this fabulous surf spray by Bumble and Bumble. It's so easy, therefore right up my street. I literally just kind of spray it into my hair, give it a little zhuzh, and it gives that brilliant kind of um, windswept, beachy look. So you just give your hair a bit of a zhuzh and it kind of gives you that slightly messy, slightly beachy look. So there we have it, my um, purple party eyes. I hope you guys have enjoyed that. It's a little bit of a different look for me, um, I absolutely adore getting dressed up, so it's been really fun to do this today. Um, I think I shall get some rather odd looks from the mums <laughs> at nursery when I go to pick up Bear. Um, 
Phil Wonder on Earth I've been doing. I have to tell them about this, won't I? Um, have a great week, everybody. Give this video a thumbs up if you liked it and don't forget to subscribe. All of those of you who are going to be at IMATS on Saturday the 4th of June, I literally cannot wait to see you. You should really enjoy the demo I've got planned. So, until next week, guys, take care and much love. Bye. Shall I do, <laughs> shall I do some, um, what do they call it? T-Rex hands. T-Rex hands. Should I do two T-Rex hands? <laughs>